What's up everybody? Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We're back here today and I promised you guys we we're going to have this video released by Saturday and here's Saturday. Stay tuned for how to might use a micrometer on testing your components to rebuild your motor. everybody so we are here today we are going to start using these micrometers this is what it looks like here this is the two to three inch one and we're going to use this to mic out the crankshaft here and make sure the main bearings and the connecting rod i'm sorry the main journals and the connecting rod journals are all within spec so that we can rebuild this and we're going to determine what type of bearings we're going to need to be able to put this back together so um, we do have the 240 here. Still waiting to get some parts in so we can start welding up and doing some things on that. Um, but we're looking forward to trying to do that. Got a challenge from my brother over over the weekend or the week. Um, he's got a fourth gen Camaro and he's wanting to take the take it on with the 240 and a drift war. So we're going to take on and start getting this ready so that we can see what you can do so let's get started okay so this is a micrometer flip it around so this here you can see it's a two to three inch micrometer okay so the way this works is the the piece of equipment that you're wanting to measure goes between these two posts here and then what it does is this here is a locking tab here and then this unscrews so inside here let me get you a little closer so i can try to focus in on that you're going to see all these little numbers Okay, so let's try this. This should be a little bit easier. We've opened this up, and I'm going to try to make this a little bit easier to kind of read and, and kind of walk through some stuff. So here we go. Whoops. I was supposed to happen. So as you can see here, we have a zero and a one. So that's going to be one, one hundred thousandths. And then for each one of these little lines between the zero and the one, each one of those little lines is point zero zero two five. I'm sorry, point zero two five. Okay. So, I did some calculation here, and the easiest way to do it is break it down as far as what you have. Sorry, that was the old one. I, I screwed up on that one, so let's start over. So, this is a 2-inch micrometer. So, we're going to start off with that, okay? 2 inches. So, then we're going to count up these here. And as you can see in here, we can see 1. The zero and the one, so it'll be 0 0.1000, okay? One, one, hundred thousand, one thousandths of an inch, okay? Okay, so after that number, we counted up 25. Each one of those, we see two of them there, because we haven't fully rolled around to the other one, so that's going to be 0 0.02, I'm sorry, 0 0.0500. Okay, so each one of those lines, two lines past that, it's gonna be 0 0.050, okay? So far, so good. Now, the number on the thimble here, which is gonna be this number here, we just rolled past 19, but not quite till 20. So it's gonna be 19, 0 0.0190. Now, this is where the numbers on the top of here go. So, because we're between, get back down here, sorry. Because we're between 19 and 20, we gotta look at the top numbers here. And as you can see, you're gonna have these little numbers here. Zero, all the way down to one. And you line up the, the closest line that you can see. And as you can see, number seven is going to be the closest line. 
So that'll be 0 0.0007 for that. Then you just add all, do basic math and add this all up. So seven, nine, six, one. So this measurement here that we have between here and here is 2.1697 inches. I know it's a little confusing, so we'll go over this one more time. I'll take you through this one more time. So I know I kind of confused a little bit of a little bit of everybody there, so we're gonna go back to this. So as it sits now, this is a two inch micrometer. So that's gonna go for the very top number here for two inches. Next number you see on here is one. So it's made one full revolution past one. 100 one one thousandths of an inch okay so that's going to be 0 0.0100 0, 0. then it's two lines past that because you can't quite see the third one yet you can see it started to poke out but it's not quite there yet so that's going to be 50 and then of course this thimble one that's where you're going to where you're going to get the 19 which adds on to it so 19 And then, of course, because it's a between number, it's going to be number seven. Now, that no top number will only get used if you're in between. If you lock it in on 20, we'll say 20 right here, it's locked in. Those lines will not line up. It means you're at an even 20. There's no, there's no number after that, so it's just, it's just 20. Okay. So I took the liberty already in miking out some of this. So, according to the manual, the main crank is specced out to be 2.309 to 2.3612. That'll be the spec for standard bearings without going oversized bearings in order for it to work. So I went through each one of them. This is the main bearing here, right here. 2.3611 falls within that range went through this and I, I kept it locked in and as I went through each one of these I adjusted it just to make sure and this one here 3 2.3611 falls within, within range again next main bearing is going to be this one I do have some stuff on there I got to clean it all up it's like same thing 3611 Three six one one, three six one one. Okay, so all the all the main bearings are in good shape. They all fall within range of what the manual says, so we're good there. Now, the manual also says that I didn't write it down. Oh no, I did. Sorry, it's right there. This is the connecting rod bearing or chat for a journal. One point nine six six eight. So 1.9670. So as long as you fall within this range, you're good. So we went through 1.9688. That falls exactly on the minimum range for you to be able to use standard bearings. 1.9688. This one here was 1.9689, so it's a little bit bigger. So we're still within that range. And then this one here, I'm gonna double check, but it's saying 9685 on this one here. So we're gonna redo that one and double check it. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna double check this last one here because when I did the, did the calculation, I don't know if I got that right, but I just wanna double check. And that's why I said you really wanna double check this multiple times to make sure you got this. When you do this, you wanna kinda of go out to the specs that you're supposed to. It should be a little bit snug fit, and what you do is when you do that, you kind of work it back, back and forth to make sure it's just a little bit, just a, bit, a little bit there, and I'll kind of give you an example. So we're gonna go out, so it fits, it's really loose. So we start tightening it up a little bit and get it lined up to the center of the journal. Once we feel, start feeling a little resistance, we use the, the thimble here the ratcheting thimble and what we do is we tighten it 
until it stops, until we see the thimble stop moving. Right now I can still see it moving in. And what this does is help you prote help protect it so that you don't over torque this down and get a uh, miss false reading. So, okay, so it's not moving anymore. We're gonna lock it in, okay? So when you have this in, then after after you get this all locked in, you can kind of work it back and forth. And as you as you put it onto the journal here, you should feel some resistance as it goes up and down. That's what you want. You want to be able to feel that to make sure that you get a good tight reading on here, so that you can get the right one on here. So let's take a look at the reading here. So we're at. Let me come around here. Okay. So this is going to be a one to two. So we're going to start off with the first number, and that's going to be a one. 1.000, okay? Second number, let's take a reading. What do you think it's gonna be? I'm saying nine. 0 0.900, oops, zero. Because it's thousandths of an inch. So, then the next number, how many lines do we see? So, trying to get a good good view for you guys here on this. I see two lines. It hasn't quite come up on the third line yet, so it's going to be 0 0.0500. Okay, so we just passed the 15. Then we got the next line here. Let me, let me kind of slide this crank back some so that we get a little more light so I can show you guys. So we got the 15. And lock it place. Hold on, let me double check. Make sure I didn't lose my number here. Okay, so okay, so we're still within. I got it locked in now, so it's not moving. Okay, so it's still set for the same one. So as you can see, the fifteens here. So it's going to be. 16, 17, 18, 19, okay? So 0 0.0190. So let's add all that up. 0, 9, 6, 9, 1. Okay, so a completely different number. Like I said, measure multiple times. This is why we measure multiple times. And as you can see, I've done it a few times. Um, I had to kind of have a refresher course, so this is a 1.9690, which still doesn't fall within range, so I probably didn't measure something right. So let's do it again. Okay, let's measure this again. Okay, it's unlocked. We're going to bring it down on to the center part of the journal, off to the side, and we're going to go back and forth. Once we feel that it's got some resistance, like I said, use the thimble here. And I can still see. I can still see it moving as I'm using this. Once we got that, lock it in after you see it moved. I'm locking it in for sure this time so we don't have a misreading again because I have a feeling that's what it was. Okay. So we're at 1.950.17. Okay, so we're at 17, which 50, 17. That puts us at 1.9670. That is the maximum it can be to run standard bearings. So it looks like we're good on that one as well too. So. Okay, so like I said, I'm not I'm not an expert at this. I just I remember some of this stuff from shop class when I was in high school, and I took a class in college when I was going through some stuff. So um, I knew the basics of this. I had to go through a refresher course on how to use this again and double check to make sure my readings were right and how to how to explain it a little bit to you guys as far as if you wanted to do this stuff at home. There's also multiple gentlemen out there um, that probably know way more than I do about reading a micrometer that would probably be able to help you out and i'll link those in the, i'll put those uh, video links up above and down below so that you can kind of get some more information if i didn't explain it good enough for you guys 
Um, but it looks like this crank is good enough to be reused. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, the, the kit I ordered was 10 over, so I'm gonna see if I can try to return that one and get a standard kit, because when I put the bearings on here, the bearings were really, really loose. They, they, they did not fit very well. They weren't, they weren't like how they should. When I put a feeler gauge in there, it wasn't, it was way too big. So we're gonna see if we can try to get the standard bearings for this, do it the correct way and get it all put back together. So as you can see, we really haven't done too much with the car. We've, we've done a little more cleaning and we've gotten some more wiring, more of the wiring harness out, but we got some more work we got to finish up. Like I said, we still have to weld up this section here on the, the strut tower, get that cleaned back up and we're gonna start getting our painted. So. Um, but I wanted to get you guys some information on this here first. Come on, spin around. There you go. Okay, so this is the crank that we're going to be reusing. This is the block, and here's all of her parts that we're going to start getting her all put back together. Everything so far is a little checking out, but with the new kit, it came with a timing chain and some other stuff. So we're going to be changing the timing chain. We're going to get the rest of the intake all cleaned up. We're going to get the oil pan cleaned up. We're going to get the valve cover painted, get the head cleaned up really good, get that specked out. We are also going to be doing some more specs on this here with uh, with a inside micrometer gauge. These are considered outside micrometer gauges. Um, the inside basically takes a measurement inside of a circle so that you can actually um, get a measurement that way as well too. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope it's informational. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll leave some information down below from some other people I was watching to kind of give you guys some more information about micrometers. I, I, like I said, I don't do it every day. This is just a hobby for me. Um, I know how to do some basic checks and that kind of stuff so we can start putting the motor back together, make sure it's within tolerance so that uh, we can use either standard bearings or if we have to go with oversized bearings for it, we get the right bearings on order. Um, I did jump the gun typically with that kind of stuff. I just I thought we would be able to use uh, 10 over bearings for it. Clearly not. So I am going to get the right bearings in so that we can start putting this motor back together. Um, we're going to start finishing cleaning her and getting her all painted up probably this week since we got some time uh, with this long weekend and hope you guys hope to see you guys next time if you like the video give me a thumbs up um like the video comment down below let me know what you guys think of this video and we'll see you next time peace